Okay, so uh, the title of my talk is the information theoretic extension of the channel network sampling theorem. Um, so I have to confess before the talk, so it's not exactly a talk about uh, analyzing big data, but rather it's about uh, how to obtain big data in the first place. So more precisely, so I'll be talking about uh, the information theoretic extension of channel network sampling theorem, and those theorems will take the form of sampling and transmission theorems. Um, and those extensions will serve as a long missing links between discrete time and continuous time information theory. And I'll be talking about some uh, applications in related fields as well. Okay, so the outline of the talk. So, uh, assuming uh, some uh, people in the audience uh, actually do not have a background in information theory, so we're uh, giving a very quick overview of the information theory. Um, now I'll talk about the, the, the main result of uh, this talk. Um, uh, the, 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 maybe it's not, okay, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, maybe I just, uh, maybe just, uh, maybe just do that. Um, so the memories of this talk, uh, and, the, and the proofs will be followed, and I'll be talking about the um, application to related fields as I promised. Um, so, okay, so fundamental information theory. Um, information theory, uh, okay, how many people actually learned information theory before? Very much. Sure. So uh, the information theory was founded uh, by um, Claudia Edward Shannon in 1948 uh, in a celebrated paper on mathematical theory of communication. So this is, but the, unfortunately, the significance of this paper was not fully recognized until like 20 or even 30 years later. So the, uh, what was happening was uh, when the, our world into the digital era, people realized a lot of questions they want to understand actually has been posed, has been answered, by Shannon 30 years ago. So Shannon, in a sense, Shannon's way ahead of everybody else, his age. <laughs> okay, so uh, the classical information theory is basically talking about the fundamental limits of digital communication theory. Uh, so uh, one thing is uh, the, the how to, you know, how smart you can compress data, so it's, it's about data compression. And the second point is the data transmission, how fast you can transmit information in a reliable fashion. So you probably notice some notice no notion like mutual information over here, like I over here, I over here, that like mutual information. So some quantity I'll be defined, uh, and I'll be defined uh, uh, very shortly. So uh, maybe for the best, let, let us define entropy first. So entropy is the, the, the one of the most important concepts uh, in many fields, actually, particularly in, in information theory called the Shannon entropy. In physics, it's called the uh, Boltzmann uh, entropy in quantum uh, mechanics by von Neumann entropy, all kinds of entropy. But the Shannon entropy I'll be talking about is called the Shannon entropy. Um, the, the entropy uh, is uh, defined for a discrete random variable. So the entropy of this discrete random variable is defined to be the negative summation p log p over here. So the p is uh, the so called the probability uh, mass function. So I'm not going to be finding the entropy for this random variable, but it can be more general, like common group Zener entropy. Basically, for any uh, you know, probability measures, you can define the, the entropy. And a quick example is let's say x is Bernoulli, fun, Bernoulli random variable is probability p, uh, it's zero, it's probably one minus p. Then the entropy of this uh, this random variable x is uh, can be computed very quickly as a simple function. Let's say this simple function you know that uses HP. Right now, here is this simple function. Um, so, what is the entropy measure? In, the, in, the, in, in the information theory, it's an interaction, roughly speaking, measures the level of uncertainties within this so uh, called random variable. Uh, actually, let me just illustrate this point using a picture over here. So, this is the HP function you are uh, you're looking at the, the inquiry size. This function, this function over here, this is HP. I can notice that when p equals to 0, when p equals to 1, the HP actually, the entropy is, um, is zero. Uh, but when p equals to 0.5, I think the, the entropy of this, uh, this function, the function actually reaches its maximum. So what does, it, what does it mean then? But if I look at the, the, the definition of the random variable when p equals to 0 or 1, x actually is not random at all. Actually, it's determinist. So it doesn't have any randomness at all. So in that case, the HP actually um, you know, attains the value of zero, so it has no randomness at all, so the entropy actually is uh, the smallest possible value. 
for the peak of the quant file is like a uniform distribution. You see, the, the, the random variable cannot be more random than uniform distribution. So the, in that, uh, in that uh, measure, so the, the, I mean, the, the, the HV function can reach the maximum IP of the quant file. So that's a quick, uh, very rough explanation of uh, what is, what is uh, entropy is made. Okay, so the, the main, when you already know the, the, the entropy for one random, random variable, you can, you can also look at the John entropy for uh, a couple of random variables. For instance, uh, for two random variables, uh, we can actually define the, the so-called John entropy. It's essentially the same, you know, basically we have negative summation of t log t, uh, except that right now the t or t a x over here, x over is a joint uh, probability mass function. Uh, so something very similar. Um, then you also can define the so-called conditional entropy, uh, the OGS notation, so the, the, the entropy of y given the, 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 the x, uh, which is defined as follows. Here, essentially, you are calculating the entropy of y, but the, according to the law, the conditional law. So the, the conditional law of y, uh, given x to the x, we use to calculate this one. Um, and if you are not so used to that, so I come back to the you know, gamma function, Conditional probability, you know, have this, you know, that. It's a definition of conditional entropy. It's not so important to remember the definition. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, it, it's a, and the idea is that might be some kind of level of uncertainty. Okay, so um, then we, you know, the, we have the sort of joint uh, entropy, we have joint entropy, then we have the conditional entropy. And it turns out these two entropy are connected by the so called chain. Uh, the change of information theory, but uh, actually follow from the change of probability theory. So why don't we just quickly go through the proof? I basically it's very simple. Uh, proof. <laughs> so this is the definition of the uh, joint entropy. But right now we are going to apply to this uh, the change rule for the conditional probability. So that's what we obtain change rule for probability. In log product, if you the sum of the sum of log, we have that. Then we do some kind of marginalization. Have this, and then that. Right now, we have this integral of x, and plus the condition of integral of y, you know, the y from the x. So this chain essentially follows the probability chain of uh, probability here. Okay, so uh, that that's new to now. Now we're ready for mutual information. Uh, so very directly, let me just give you the definition of mutual information. It probably doesn't contain much information, uh, but anyway, so. Uh, so uh, um, so the mutual information between two, mutual information is defined between two random variables. I'm, I'm saying between, not like a bit mutual uh, 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 something in between two, random, two distribution, two random variables. Uh, so the, this is the definition for mutual information. Uh, again, I'm actually using the discrete distribution, but it, this definitely can be more general. Um, then the, I feel confused at that, as, uh, I, uh, as I was, my first study is definition. Uh, look at this definition. There are some alternative definition of mutual information. It's essentially, you can actually write down uh, the mutual information as uh, the, uh, some of the individual entropy minus the joint entropy. So uh, this is actually you know, very easy to follow from the definition, but it looks much nicer. Uh, so we have, we can also say that the, you know, the, the mutual information is the difference between the entropy minus the conditional entropy. Also, vice versa, because uh, this uh, definition actually is metric, which is up to x and y. So you use the mutual information between y and x, and, uh, and x and y are actually the same. Okay, so, uh, uh, so you know, the entropy is made in basically rough measure of the, the level of uncertainties. So, what about the mutual information? Well, the mutual information is kind of a measure of correlation. So let me just explain this to you to so uh, let's say you know when we have x y uh, independent, this is very extreme case to say you couldn't be x y couldn't be more uncorrelated, right? It's completely independent. Then you quickly check from the definition that you know, the p x y is equally to the product p x p y. So uh, you know when they are uncorrelated, uh, the mutual information actually is equal to zero. And also when x y is the same, then the mutual information will be equal to h i. We can actually quickly prove that uh, the mutual information is upper bounded by h i. In other words, for the one of the extreme case that the x y is equal to zero, so it's because that's for the case that the x y could be more uncorrelated, couldn't be more correlated, 
and the, the mutual information aggregation is maximum. So the mutual information is kind of rough measure in change. I'm measuring the correlation between two random variables. Okay, so uh, and then the uh, so the, the black bone of uh, information theory uh, is the so-called Shannon Green Bryan theorem. Uh, this uh, it basically it says for any finite value station a guided process, then the circuit empirical entropy will converge uh, with probability one. Actually, in, in other sense as well, like in our norm or in other norm, uh, converge with the, the, the HX. The HX uh, here I did not exactly define before, but in the, the essentially like the, the normalized uh, the joint entropy uh, for a random process. So uh, uh, if you want to calculate this, uh, the, you know, the entropy rate, this entropy rate, you can just uh, uh, calculate uh, by uh, you know, computing the empirical entropy of, of this uh, uh, of this uh, process. Okay, this is what the one of the backbone of the information. In, in a way, it's under a lot of lot lot of lot numbers for the information here. There's a lot actually. There's a lot of proofs uh, for this theorem. I, I, I don't know at least five or six. But the simplest one I have to the sandwich argument by Agoyer and Cover in 19, uh, 1988. The Cover actually mentioned in his uh, channel worthy talk. He yeah, had his uh, the greatest achievements. This is one of the his greatest achievements proving channel Khmer using very simple argument. Okay, uh, so uh, then the, now we're ready to talk about it, the you know the uh, the side of the information says about it, the fundamental limits in digital communication. So uh, there are two theorems uh, to characterize uh, the fundamental limits. The first one is the Shannon source coding theorem. Uh, this is about the data compression. It basically gave us a strategy. You know, for an information source, you cannot compress your information source below the entropy of that information source, no matter how you do it. <laughs> no matter what, you just cannot go below that. But you can get arbitrarily close to the entropy. I don't know, I think everybody in the room has used some kind of compression file, like zip, IR, you know, the, that's actually the, the basic implementation of the number zip in 1978. So uh, people talk about advanced technology, but they never talk about the long size compression, because that has been done already. And number zip, in the center, it can be arbitrarily close to the entropy rate, uh, uh, and that cannot be improved by the system. This is uh, in the Shannon's uh, the celebrated theorem of the source code theorem. Um, then he, uh, well, the bit of proof actually followed from the Shannon and Bryman and uh, followed from the table of critical set analysis. And the second theorem, as I said, you know, the, uh, the Shannon also characterized how fast you can transmit information in a reliable fashion. And the, this, uh, this is the, the, the constant of Shannon, uh, the Shannon code theorem. Uh, basically, said for each channel, we actually have another threshold called capacity. So below the capacity, you can always transmit information as reliable as you want. Right? You can always do that. But above the capacity, you just cannot do that. So it's an impossibility of um, So this is actually another threshold for uh, a, you know, the uh, a communication channels. One of the focus of this one. Okay, so uh, the proof actually follows from the Shannon and Ian Bryman and plus typical set analysis and plus uh, random probing evidence. Okay, so that's basically the classical information set. I, I know I go very fast, but the, probably the important notion is information information. Over here, so later on, I'll be dealing with information information. Okay, so what the information theory nowadays is to create a rapidly developed you know, intermittent interacting with many fields. So we started from the communication, probability theory, statistics, and I'll be talking about some application of my result, our results to statistics. Also, of course, mathematics, economics, and computer science, and physics. Okay, so let's work a go over here of the information theory. Questions uh, so Okay, so, uh, I'll be ready to talk about some of the results of this talk. Uh, and, and we work quickly some of the proof. And the, uh, so let me start by reviewing this, the, you know, the Shannon Macro sampling theorem. Um, the, this theorem actually says if we have a continuous time segment of FT, um, then but waistband with limit W, to capital W, and let's sample the, the continuous time segment every two double seconds. Then we're going to have you know, infinite many time samples, right? So, like you know, over here, so Fn, and divided by you know, two W. Time cycle, so that's this way. 
And indeed, uh, Shannon Michael Sampin actually says, well, this continuous time sample can be exactly recovered by the time sample. And here's how you can do that. This is a survey, so you know, the Shannon Michael Sampin sample. Um, well, I guess I don't have to say how important, that, how fundamental this theorem is because it basically connects analog world and the digital world. From analog to digital, we have to use this something theorem. Um, so, but can, you know, the, in particular, the, this something theorem can be used to study the, 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 the information theory for instance, continuing time across the channel. So, let me just uh, quickly go through some of the arguments to show you how uh, this theorem can be used. Uh, so, for instance, let's look at this uh, white Gaussian formulation for AW gene, predicting white Gaussian channel. If you have not heard of this before, this is the most commonly used channel in information theory and communication. So, typically, so whatever you heard, if, whatever you're, you're, you're hearing from me now, is kind of a crafted version of my somewhere. So, this is uh, the most commonly used uh, channel in the in communication. Then the, the so how you, so how how do we use this uh, something theorem? You know? so, so the something theorem you know, actually assume the bandwidth limit. So how do you do that? So uh, assume the bandwidth limit w and apply the Shannon Nyquist sampling to the high this in this channel. And notice that the end over here this is essentially like, like the, the composition here was the sampling kind of field space. So the end over here in fact is not a time in that this space in that. But we can regard the end as time in this. We don't have discrete time. Here. Uh, but then the, a lot of tools and theorems and results in from the discrete time channel can be used to study the capacity for uh, you know, the discrete time channels. You know, this is a very developed uh, uh, you know, the, uh, topic. Um, so this is a kind of norm. Uh, but you know, previously we do not have any bandwidth limit. So the particular limit, uh, uh, w, uh, as, uh, you know, as w goes to infinity, we don't have the capacity. Which is equal to P over two. So we have this you know, P over two, this is a very uh, renowned formula for the you know, additive white Gaussian channel with the power constraints. So that's you know, how you apply uh, Shannon number, uh, you know, Shannon language something to from analog world to the district world. Uh, but there are some issues with conventional sampling approach, um, which has been long for a while. So, first, if you, if you if you assume by the limit that some a signal cannot be time limited, this is just you know, fundamental fact about the Fourier transform. If Fourier transform has finite support, then the frequency domain cannot be finite, and vice versa. You cannot, cannot do that. And this is an uh, issue that, uh, in a way, is, uh, has been addressed by Gallagher, Minor, in, in Sighting. And particularly, Sighting actually introduces uh, so called prolet, uh, prolet uh, sphere, spherical wave function to, to try to address this issue. Um, then, but then, but, but the, the, the arguments I previously gave actually only gave you a lower one for the capacity. Uh, for this, I, I don't want to do but there's not too much on here, but there are some issues. Uh, this issue has been addressed by you know, some people in the city, it's a very old problem. Um, so, but one of the most serious issues that uh, this model cannot handle is for the continuous time, you can just not handle or incorporate continuous time feedback from memory into the channel because the white Gaussian noise is not exactly a stochastic process. It's very difficult to characterize. It's, it's a kind of generalized distribution. Uh, so that's an issue with the conventional one, but uh, this is the most serious issue. But this issue can be addressed using our, uh, our approach. <laughs> so our approach actually is we're going to base on the, the, the so-called Brownian motion foundation of the AW gene, so rather than the white, white Gaussian noise. Right now, you're looking at the standard one motion, which can be viewed as the integral of white Gaussian noise. Um, then we can send for approximate the the the, 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 the body of the gene to obtain the associated discrete time Gaussian channels, and then the then our sampling theorem or our approximation theorem, the so basic extensions of the Shannon Nyquist sampling theorem, we will guarantee that the discrete time Gaussian channel can be arbitrarily close to continuous time channel. In an information theoretic sense. If you want to study the original continuous time Gaussian channel, so you can study the, the, the corresponding discrete time channel. Then you take a limit. Then you're going, you're going to go back to the, the, the original continuous time channel. Okay, so that's the, basically our, uh, our idea. Uh, so the, uh, the advantage of our approach is basically address the third issue. I mean, the, the, so for uh, when, when the when the original Shannon Shannon Nyquist sampling is applied, it actually destroyed the time causality. 
but uh, in our approach, we can't catch. This is because the very nice after finding option. Whoops. Uh, so, so they will allow something on transmission with respect to the time. And as a result, uh, the, uh, the sample or the parsimated channel, which are discrete time, uh, will consistently inherit temporal causality from the original channel. Okay, later on, we'll show you more details. Uh, but that will you know, give us a natural connection between continuous time passing channel and discrete time passing channel, even if the channel does have a feedback from them. So this is uh, uh, the issue that the third issue that the previous book cannot not handle. Okay, so now we're ready. For the, the first extension, so this extension actually also takes the form of something zero. So let's consider this uh, you know, the uh, Austin channel. Uh, right now, so look at it over here, actually, it does have a feedback. So it's a feedback from the previous time. And the, now, so we're going to sample the channel over the time interval zero capital T. Uh, after the sampling, we're going to have this uh, time sample version of the long channel, which is this good time. This good time. Um, so then our theorem, sampling theorem actually says, as the sampling gets finer, finer, the mutual information of the sample channel convert to that of the original continuous channel. So in sense, our theorem is common sense. <laughs> in the sense that the, you know, the channel actually said, uh, if you have finite limit, then your sampling is fine enough, you can exactly recover the, you know, the original signal. So our sampling theorem says, that to resolve this uh, finite limit at some point, so if you sample fine enough, you can almost recover the, the original information. Right. Common sense. Um, so, so more precisely, so assuming some, some kind of regularity condition, we can actually prove that the original mutual information of the, the, the continuous time channel can be the limit, is the uh, limit of the discrete time, like the, the mutual information of the discrete time channel. So this is the, the first extension, also taking the form of some example. Uh, the all time of the proof, I think I can go through that. Let me just take a touch that. Uh, let's make sure you realize I do have a proof. <laughs> so the second one is the power submission theorem. Uh, the power submission theorem actually says it's a little bit different from the sampling theorem. So we're going to consider the continuous time channel uh, again. But uh, instead of sampling, we're going to do the so called Euler Mariama power submission with, with, with respect to this return points like T0 to 1 Tn. So now what we have is again so this return gaussian channel. But now notice that the y tilde now is not exactly output anymore. It's a kind of approximated version of the, the output. Then the approximation theorem actually says, well, roughly speaking again, so the as the approximation gets finer, and the mutual information of the this return channel will convert to that the original continuous time channel. So it's kind of common sense. Uh, I, as much as I hate it, I mean, the proof is very lengthy and the argument is I would not show. Uh, so the, again, so assuming some regularity as the conditions, uh, the, the, the continuous time uh, Gaussian channel, the mission information, information of the continuous time Gaussian channel will be equal to the limit of this uh, approximated. Again, so let me just emphasize my data over here is a uh, approximated version of, of uh, the original object. Okay, so you know, so, so we have basically so that's our results for so something theorem. So we obtain the full sampling and power submission theorems. So the, the y actually are obtained by the power submission. Okay, so let me just uh, uh, <laughs> when I prove somebody analysis, actually that I don't want to be sure. I, I hate the proof, but the proof is very as I mentioned before, it's very lengthy and ugly. It actually tortured me for several months. <laughs> Just write it down, so, so you know, I, I'm not sure you will hit it too, so let me just hide it. Um, so, so instead of any use that the remaining uh, five minutes, we talk about applications of extensions. So, application number one is uh, about recovering a classical equation theoretic formula and uh, some, some kind of new results. So, let's uh, consider this kind of uh, uh, AW gene. Uh, I'm mentioning AW gene, but you don't have to. No, the name. I mean, essentially, just uh, some uh, pass and pass another pass to give another pass, you know, some setup of this theory. Uh, uh, one moment, so let's assume this, uh, if this X pass is a station Gaussian pass and this power is representative. And this is a classical formula in the theory. The same like the, the mutual information weight is, can be expressed 
as it's inevitable, and the F lambda will share the you know the, the power structure density of the position in constant cost of the classical information theory. Um, I think Shannon actually mentioned this result in his uh, 1948 paper, but they did not prove that. <laughs> Shannon did not prove many things. Uh, many other people actually proved that, including the common growth, the Russian, you know, the um, many, many people actually helped him to, to finish the proof. Uh, actually, I think the common growth you know, as a founder of uh, probability theory, as he actually mentioned, does not regard information theory as a branch of uh, probability theory. It's just not. It's, that is way too novel to be a branch of probability theory. So, anyway, so the, the, the common growth actually is really something very much appreciated uh, information theory. So, uh, so, the, uh, so, going back to the slide. So uh, we have recovered this formula. So, but let me just quickly mention the original the conventional approach of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, this uh, formula. Actually, is, uh, the, uh, use the spectral analysis of infinite dimensional coherence back co coherence operator. It's, it's a lot of heavy tools from uh, functional analysis and stochastic calculus, for instance, Mercer theorems, Wiener Hall, and then Jason Law, and then Siegel theorems. Very, very complex. I'm not saying it's way too difficult to prove that. It's just uh, you really have to get there. You finish your, you know, for, for undergrad, you finish your functional analysis, you study your stochastic analysis, calculus, and you have to learn many, many steps to prove the theorem. But instead, so let me just quickly mention that in our theorems, for instance, the sampling theorem, can be used to give elementary proof for this class of formulas the result uh, we are attended in this year. Uh, so the rich information, as I mentioned, it's because this original rich information can be approximated by this uh, discrete time information. But, but discrete time will have many, many tools to study that. And uh, the, 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 so essentially, uh, 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 the, I can use uh, this over here. We can, uh, what, we, what was left over here is uh, the linear algebra and calculus. And that's it. <laughs> Nothing going beyond the linear algebra and calculus. And then in the end, they'll actually reach the, I'm not saying that the, the proof actually is straightforward. It actually is some tricky. They should have all complaints and actually as a product we have proved a hybrid version of Siegel theorem. Siegel theorem has a discrete time version and continuous time version. We have proved something can be turned. But discrete time, continuous time, something can be turned if it is the two worlds. Okay, so it turns out our transmission theorem can be used to uh, analyze the capacity in the continuous time information theory. I think I'm almost running out of time. Let me just quickly flash that. Uh, so let's say you have this uh, continuous, let me just illustrate the idea. So the idea is actually a linear time, you apply our theorems, and have a discrete time. When you analyze discrete time, because a lot of tools, theorems, results can be applied to discrete time. Then you go take a limit, going back to the, the continuous time, and you have a result of continuous time. Mm -hmm. The result something like that. So you know, this is discrete, the analysis is discrete time, but then you take a limit, you have a it turns out that you know, this technique can be applied to many other families of uh, multi-user white-dusting channels, for instance, uh, you know, multiple iClass, broadcast, and inference channel. And you can also uh, analyze the effect feedback. As I said, our approach does allow accommodate feedback now. Okay, so in the, the, the application number three to statistics, uh, so again, so let me just uh, mention that the, for this channel, you probably already know information series closely related to statistics. So for instance, for this channel, for this Gaussian channel, the classical results in 1970 by Dent says the mutual information is, can be written as the integral of this uh, MMSE. You know, I'm sure some of you actually found uh, in the uh, statistics, you know, MMSE is the central quantity in the estimation theory. Uh, so that can be done. Um, then the, the connection can be extended to, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the feedback case, the identical well, here is mutual information, now over well, here is uh, you know, MSC, yeah, MSC, I think, the generalization of limitance uh, reports. Then 30 years later, uh, Gore, Chopin, and Rodeo, they actually uh, proved uh, you know, the same, quantity, same formula, a similar formula for the derivative of mutual information. Uh, another 10 years later, my colleague Dr. Sun and I were actually uh, extended the Kadota, the kind of zip results we have inside. Uh, and the derivative formula for the mutual information. So you can actually kind of tell how the four formula over here are mutual information and then the SD. So this connection between information series and statistics. So it's not so surprising to see our next result basically 
is about uh, you know the something theorem for MMC. The continuous time is the limit of the this time. The continuous time is the limit of the ultimate MMC. Okay, so uh, we'll actually quickly conclude. We'll talk about the information theoretic extensions. So I mentioned some of the other applications. So right now we are exploring to either strengthening our extension or you know the look at some more uh, applications. So let me just stop here. So thank you very much. Thank you.